Hey there, and welcome to the 52nd, 52nd, 52nd Octoprint on Air uh, broadcast. I'm your host, Gina Heuske, still no B in there. And yeah, first of all, sorry for the long delay in getting one of these out. Um, also, for those of you watching this live, please raise your hand if you can hear me properly. I hope you can. This is yet again another setup because I've switched laptops and operating systems. So this is now running... Uh, me running Linux again as my main. Um, yeah, so uh, reasons for the long delay. I had a ton of stuff to do with getting both 1.9 out and also um, prepping this new camera stack that I've now soft launched with the, a second Octopi image that is available in the Raspberry Pi imager and also for download and stuff. Um, yeah, and uh, frankly, these streams even though I've been doing them now regularly since 2016, take up a surprising amount of time to prepare and uh, also still stress me out a whole bunch. Um, so I decided to just, yeah, let, let Octoprint on Air go on a short hiatus and, and I hope I pronounced this correctly, uh, on a short, a short hiatus and, and instead concentrate on 1.9 and concentrate on the new camera stack and concentra concentrate on not... Uh, going crazy in between and uh, of course managing everything else that has to be managed in all the time and so um, and this is the reason why this is the first one since February that I'm doing and all in all I also might change things up in the future about how I do these things because yeah usually the live attendance is not that great so I was wondering whether I, whether I should just you know like do pre-recorded devlog things and do something like a quarterly Q&A thing because we also once again don't have any Q&A &A, um, any any questions in the Q&A backlog so uh, there does not seem to be that big of a need for that anymore so that it that it makes sense to do one uh, Q&A session per month so um, yeah I'm not yet sure what to do how to do uh, whether I will actually actually change things up or not so uh, all that is still stuff that I'm thinking about but uh, yeah before I make any any decisions I would I will definitely throw up a post on Patreon and allow all of you to comment as well so um, uh, don't worry about that just know that yeah I might change things up a bit to yeah reduce the the overload that live broadcasts every month do uh, provide um, yeah because frankly the past three months now that I have had not uh, to plan any of these were kind of nice with regards to not feeling under pressure so much with with that but yeah we'll see um it still is a perk so I'll definitely keep the dev lock and uh, uh, figure out some way to make sure that uh, things stay fair and such but without um, adding on to the whole overload okay so that was that short outline as usual we are going to talk about or what about what i have been up to then we are going to uh, see what the next steps will be then we'll take a quick look at the stats and then yeah then we have space for q a but that will probably be something that the people that are uh, watching this live will have to take care of because as i said there was nothing in the backlog so if push comes to shove we'll just keep it short today <laughs> um Okay, so what I've been up to. Um, yeah, so uh, I was actually going to start this with saying uh, 1.9, but then I realized, wait, no, that's not true. Um, before 1.9 and before the, the whole release candidate phase for 1.9, there was actually a 187 release. <laughs> uh, and that happened on March 2nd. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much uh, something forced on me because uh, um, a third-party dependency released a backwards incompatible uh patch version and uh yeah so i had to work around that and um yeah in the meantime i also included a, a back i backported a minor fix to make octoprint work with python 3.11 so that was the, the the nice uh thing about all of this and yeah so having to release 187 at that point was a bit unexpected because i actually had uh pretty much planned to do 1.9.0 ORC1 in that week and that then had to be postponed again a bit by 
yeah, by by five days or so, five days here, um, because on March 7th, I pushed out the first release candidate for 1.9. And all in all, we saw six release candidates this time around uh, between March 7th and May 23rd. Uh, every release candidate saw something like between, well, yeah, some were, some got hotfixes within 24 hours and some got uh, got really long testing phases of two weeks plus. So uh, that was a bit of a mixed bag. Um, most of the regression fixes that were necessary were, uh, yeah, were, were fixes for, uh, for, for things or improvements of, uh, things that were either, um, related to the change of, of, of the webcam, uh, implementation. So with 1.9, I, uh, or rather Octoprint switched to, um, not, no longer having, uh, the webcam stuff in in its core basically, but rather in a in a in a plugin. So the whole webcam uh, implementation was swapped over to 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 a plugin mechanic, and um, combined with a with a bundle plugin uh, called how how did we call it? I forgot how we, how we classic I think classic webcam. Um, that pretty much does the same thing that the old core implementation did, but now from a webcam point of view. And there were still a, a bunch of issues that we had to iron out in there, some of which were related to uh, compatibility with uh, third-party plugins that made use of webcam functionality, some of which, yeah, were just things that we did not have on, on our radar uh, when, when things were implemented and then had to fix uh, afterwards. Um, and the other thing that saw some work that had to happen after all was uh, with the Gco viewer because that also saw some heavy work, uh, both of which, by the way, webcam plugins and uh, Gcode viewer uh, improvements were uh, PRs. So really, really nice work there from the community. Um, and uh, yeah, and and yeah, some some things had to be ironed out there as well. And that was pretty much. Yeah, completely expected because yeah, there were some big changes in these parts of Octoprint, so uh, it did not really surprise me that we had to do some fixes in there during the release candidate phase. So, so far so good, no no surprises there, and um, all in all, I was quite happy with the RC phase. Um, there there weren't really any big issues, nothing really completely utterly broken. Uh, only some issues uh, for which I rolled out a fix right away because they were a problem for, yeah, well, I, mm, uh, mm. they felt very broken in a way that I would have had to stop some people from taking part in the RC if I had let them in. So that was the reason why I switched. Uh, why, it, why, why there were some RCs that were only out for less than 24 hours, I think two. Uh, yeah, actually, the first one contained a problem where we ran into an issue with how Pip behaves after all. Uh, so something that I did had to be rolled back. And the second one, I think, was a bug. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, the release, by the way, on May 23rd was also quite uneventful as far as I can see so far. Um, we got the usual update problems that aren't actually caused by the octoprint changes but rather by something in an environment of the user finally breaking for good after it having been broken for a while um and things like that a bunch of people actually got confused though by uh, the introduction of the webcam plug-in system versus the uh new camera stack that i rolled out soft launched a couple of days later and yeah, I think I should have timed that better because people thought that the webcam changes in 1.9 were a new camera layer, which is not the case because the webcam layer is an, is an operating system thing and Octopi only. And the 1.9 changes on the webcam stuff are not, not no, no changes that um, could in any way or shape influence whether Octoprint is compatible to, for example, an RPICAM version 3 or not. So that caused a bit of confusion and in the future I will see if I can maybe uh, try to separate things like that a bit better. Sorry for that. Um, speaking of the new camera stack, that was also something that I did over the past uh, three months a lot. Uh, yeah, several. I, I mentioned it in the last uh, 
In the last broadcast, I think that I was working on something and that I was ready to prepare a first test image for general consumption. And that is what happened a bunch of times during this uh, time period. So I think maybe four or five test images, I have no idea, um, which I pushed out, let people check, get, get feedback on, try to figure out what the issue were, uh, issues were. Um, uh, reproduced some problems and uh, and fix them. Then uh, what I also did was at some point things suddenly stopped working on one of the images when people upgraded the kernel and the packages already on there, which was because uh, Raspberry Pi had um, pushed out a new lib camera version around this time. And uh, yeah, it turns out that the camera streamer uh, the camera streamer had to uh, re be recompiled in that case, and uh, yeah, because otherwise the binary would simply no longer file find the the um, the library. And in order to work around problems like this in the future, I realized, okay, I think I won't get get around this time. So I built a Debian package for the camera streamer. I uh, created a little apt repository for Octoprint spe or Octopi specifically. Uh, on app.octoprint.org, um, prepared a test build that used this, installed camera streamer from that, debugged that over the course of a week or so. Uh, and yeah, then that finally worked and that was really nice. Um, and once things looked stable enough, I and, and shortly after 1.9, I decided, okay, let's see, um, we'll, uh, we'll soft launch this. So first, the original plan had been to pretty much just swap the whole camera stack on Octopi from from one to the next moment. And I decided against that because some people were still running into some stability issues, uh, which seemed to be caused by camera streamer or something within camera streamer versus certain kernels. It's not entirely sure yet what is going on there. And that didn't feel like something that I should force on people. So. Um, for now, we are running uh, two or are providing two images. One is the more or less original Octopi, just with updated Octoprint, with updated uh, kernel, updated uh, firmware, and some minor fixes. And uh, the other one is the same, but also with the camera stack swapped out. And um, yeah, people seem to be happy that they can now run the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, Raspberry Pi Camera 3 with the new stack. And uh, yeah, multicam support is also easier with that. And I saw that the multicam plugin is also getting a lot, a lot of love. So hopefully that is going to help. And also the light just flickered. So I hope we won't get some weird power issues here now. That would be really a really bad moment for that. Um, and um, where was I? Crap. Mm. I lost my train of thought, um, but uh, basically, uh, yeah. So the idea originally was to 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 come to to just have one image going forward, but for now we have two. People can decide. Some people have said that they will roll back to the old one because the new one doesn't have as many options as they'd like. And yeah, I think long term I have some bad news for you, but for now you can of course do that. Um, the thing is that the new one has a ton of options, uh, actually more more options than the old one. They are just different. The configuration is just different and people will have to just get used to a new way of configuring configuring things. And as far as I've seen, there's also a lot of work happening in the community by Charlie, for example, who's working on a camera plugin that will uh, directly work together with the camera streamer thing a bit better, uh, e.g. by use, utilizing the, um, the other options for webcam stream. I just forgot the name of it, which is a bit, yeah, okay. Um, but, um, and if I remember correctly, I saw also some config options happening here and there. So um, yeah, give the community some time and I think everything will be uh, at the same point or even better. And yeah, the new camera streamer is really behaving quite nicely and um, I'm quite happy with that. And AOFAN did a really, really good job with that and is also helping a ton with support. And uh, yeah, we are also talking about things. So that is a really, really nice uh, 
close uh, cooperation that's happening there and uh yeah i really enjoy that so yeah also the the thing that i i, I couldn't remember earlier was web rtc because camera streamer <laughs> supports web rtc and that is quite easily to implement now into octoprint thanks to the new camera plug uh, pl uh, webcam plugin system and jim just threw into the chat that uh yeah the camera settings plugin is probably also going to be adjusted so yeah, there won't be a lot of reasons to not use the new one uh, soon, as soon at least as we figure out why for some people there are some stability issues. It could also be that it is a bit more um, uh, sensitive about uh, weird cameras, but yeah, not 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 clear yet. So we have to figure that out. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, what I also did with regards to that is I mentioned that I built my own Debian package right now and I do this in a very convoluted way using Termux uh, stuff. And yeah, so IFN is now building their own Debian package and so an official Debian package for Camera Streamer and uh, I started working on using that instead. But um, in order for that to be something that I can just throw an app.octoprint.org and then if you do an app upgrade the next time it will be pulled in transparently for that to work some things first have to be, be done and uh, tested properly and such so that has not happened yet. Uh, what else did I do? Um, yeah, so I also uh, worked on 1.10 obviously so some PRs were already merged and I also fixed the one or other bug. And then uh, Last week, or rather, uh, actually from exactly a week ago until Sunday, so from, from Thursday to Sunday, I was at uh, GPN21. And uh, let me quickly switch you over here. Um, so GPN21, that is the that was the 21st uh, Gulasch Programmiernacht, which is the Gulasch Programming Night, which sounds odd, but is uh, basically just um, a nice... You, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it used to be a nice small CCC event. It now is a nice mid to yeah mid to to larger sized CCC event in Karlsruhe, uh, and it looks like this at night. Basically, a really great image that Lea Oswald um, shot and released under the CC BY license. So I just wanted to share it here. And uh, yeah, so that was my first CCC event uh, since late 2019 and actually my first event ever since that. And I didn't expect this, but I'm mentioning it here because this turned out to be something that also heavily influenced my uh, attitude towards Octoprint. So um, as you know, the past three years have been stressful AF. Um, I, uh, yeah, the popularity of Octoprint increased a ton, uh, probably also because a bunch of people were stuck in the one or other lockdown and yeah, finding new hobbies in the process. And um, that was, of course, great because it, it meant a lot more success, basically, but it also increased my workload a ton. And yeah, all of that stuck at home as well with no events to go to, no no distractions like that. And as it turned out, um, uh, as it turned out, also no longer running into people at events that just smiled at me and thanked me for what I did and who I could just talk to um, about Octoprint and, and about 3D printing and nerd out with. And this is something that I now experience for the first time again since almost four years at GPN. And that was absolutely amazing. And yeah, was what I needed without knowing that I needed it. And um, the workload is still high, but these four days kind of helped me to balance uh, things again and, and, and feeling way more like I, I created something great here than just feeling stressed out all the time. You know, I, I it's a bit hard to put into words, but... Um, yeah, when when you just I, I did a bunch of volunteer bar shifts at these so these events are volunteer run so you you can volunteer to help out with the event and uh, my buddy and my and me who who go to these events together we usually volunteer for for doing the one or other bar shift, um, and uh, yeah it is it is kind of great when you just hand people drinks and suddenly one of these says oh by the way I also want to say thank you and 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 you you briefly talk to them and. 
that happened a bunch there and um that yeah that just gives you a warm fuzzy wholesome feeling that is something that simply you cannot get when you sit in your home office for three and a half years and code away and only interact with people through the internet so uh that is something that i really needed and um yeah, what I also wanted to say is uh, thanks to everyone who said hi there uh, or and or sent me a, a postcard via the Chaos Post because, yeah, that meant a whole lot in all of the postcards I've, I've collected on my wall here. Um, and I also ran into someone there uh, because, as it turned, uh, turns out, the maintainer of Mainsail, um, uh, yeah, me to you, I'm trying to Stefan Day, yeah, uh, was was also at GPN, and um, as you can see, no, we aren't hostile, we aren't enemies. Actually, we had a, we had a blast taking these pictures that we took simply to po uh, drive drive home a point that we have, uh, that we both have, because we both see that some parts of the community are trying to play out our projects against each other, basically playing to try to play out Octoprint against the whole Clipper ecosystem. Um, and yeah, we both would love if you just stopped doing that and stopped trying to create tribal wars and just use whatever you want to use without trying to, you know, like talk bad about everything else regardless of which direction by the way because yeah when i talked to him i also learned that uh, yeah apparently some of you are also um well i'm not saying some of you but some people uh, some 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 people from the larger octoprint user base apparently also slightly misbehave here and there over there so um please don't um and yeah so once again Please, no tribal wars. We are all just, yeah, we are all just trying to make 3D printing better. And yeah, we had some amazing chats. We talked for several hours, swapped user stories, um, swapped uh, maintainer uh, stories, swapped uh, tips as well, like um, figuring out some stuff. We are still in contact. Maybe he will also be at camp. We don't, we don't know yet. Um, so yeah, that was a really nice encounter. Uh, yeah, GBN can strongly recommend. Okay, um, back to me. Yeah, okay. So, what are the next steps after all of this that I just summarized? So, first of all, um, yeah, originally I planned to release 1.9.1 this week, but now it's probably going to be the next or maybe even after that because um, I'm still running some, running after some info on some some things that people are observing uh, concerning the G-Code viewer. And uh, we are also still trying to figure something out with regards to a bit of the webcam integration that uh, is currently looking like there might be a browser bug in there, but it's not fully clear. Um, some minor bugs have already been discovered and fixed. So that will definitely be in 1.9.1. 1 uh, 1, 1 um, but we'll have to see uh, what else um comes in there yeah um then uh, i also have to look into uh some more steps towards swapping the camera stack for good so for one there is uh, integrating this new debian package that i mentioned that au fan is now uh, compiling on his end um as i said i want to allow you to be able to upgrade to that transparently on the image but for this, the package needs to be in a specific shape. So I have to coordinate that a bit and then test things. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, it's it's pretty much clear what to do. It just hasn't been done yet. Then I mentioned last time, doc rewrite. Yeah, still hasn't happened. Uh, the All of the action weeks the past few months were pretty much eaten up by the camera stack stuff. Um, which maybe at this point I might have to declare to be something for reaction weeks. I'm not sure. And uh, yeah, then the usual suspects. And I can already announce that uh, come August, I'll also be at CCC camp, which is pretty amazing. Uh, 2019, uh, the last when the last camp happened, I was there and that was one of the most amazing experience that I ever had. So, uh, and it came, and came at a perfect time and was pretty much the, the reset that I needed back then. So yeah, if, 
four days uh, at GPN serving the drinks and talking to people can help changing my attitude to, uh, towards Octoprint a bit for the better again. I'm pretty sure that six days on a field somewhere to the north of Berlin, surrounded by a couple thousands of other like-minded people and amazing light installations at night, surely will uh, even more so. So yeah, that is going to help a ton, I think. Okay. Um, now, of course, all the tabs have fallen asleep that I wanted to show you next. Okay, done. Um, right, uh, because now we are switching over here for the uh, quick look at the stats. Um, so, first of all, the, the usual stuff, uh, there is not much. Yeah, I I actually had opened all of the, these these things so that the data would be there. And then I forgot that I install, installed an extension in my browser that would sleep tabs that are not used right now. <laughs> and so everything now had to reload. But here we are. Okay, so um, the last seven days, you can see that just like just out of this grid, um, the uh, the number of installations of 1.9.0 went past the installations of 1.8.7. So uh, 1.9.0 is now the dominating uh, octoprint version. And you can also see that 33 uh, 33 percent so a third of all installed instances are already uh, are already 1.9 and um yeah no no change really with the python version situation um the the most uh yeah the version used most for printing has been 1.9 for a while now and the the world map is currently broken. <laughs> Some Grafana update a while back broke things, and I haven't yet had the time had time to fix the queries again. But at least now we can look at a nice, uh, great tone uh, map of the world. Okay. Um, what is quite interesting during times like these right now, where updates are happening, is the update subsection of the of the stats. So on. Uh, on the 23rd, I released Octoprint, and you can see that most people. So the biggest spike was on the on the 23rd and on the 24th already. And now then we had a long tail. Funnily enough, plugin updates. Most plugin updates peaked at uh, at, at the 25th. So I'm now wondering whether that might have been due to uh, plugins finally rolling out updates they should have rolled up a long time ago to accommodate changes in Octoprint 1.9. Um, but yeah, and um, maybe also a look at my long-term tracking, which, by the way, I'm. Com this is on my on my uh, on my personal NAS on my personal Grafana instance. You cannot access that. Uh, this is purely on yeah in my LAN here. But what I do is I pull in all the exports from data.octoprint.org/export, which is public, uh, and use those to just. Yeah, feed in some number crunching results into an influx DB every hour. And I've been doing that for over two years now. So we now have some nice long term stats here and can see that, um, yeah, two years ago we were at 109,000 instances and now we are at 148,000 instances. So this is the growth in popularity that I was talking about. Um, we see some interesting um, seasonal behavior here in the uh, in the printing uh, durations because yeah people print less in summer who 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 would have thought and people print less over the uh, uh, print less over the the holidays but more leading up to the holidays so that is always fun to see as well yeah. Uh, Python is doing something a bit disturbing right now because the Python 3 instance count is going down a bit, but this is probably due to the overall instance count having dropped here a bit. By the way, I have no idea why I suddenly saw an increase by uh, 13,000 instances here, which then, uh, which 10k then uh, went away here again. So. This is a bit of a mystery, but um, 
that is probably why we see this bump here because we went from 70 to 67 so that is like 3k machines that are suddenly no longer there but which would explain that maybe yeah and um as i mentioned there's also data.octoprint.org where can you where you can look at a ton of uh of stats that are just visualized for you there all the time without having to wait for me to do one of these presentations um and yeah, the interesting stuff should also all be in there. And I don't know um, if you already saw that, but there's also 1.9 um, dropped JavaScript ES5 support. So now we, we now require ES9. And this is actually the graph that I used to base this decision on. Um, because you can see here that of all the browsers that are used to access Octoprint, 98.95% are confirmed to be compatible to ES9. 0.9.6% uh, uh, have unknown ES9 support because this, those are wonky browsers that we cannot classify correctly. And only 0.09%, so currently 127 instances out there, um, run or... or yeah or, or yeah or, or rather 127 client accesses i should say out there uh, happened with a browser that was not es9 ready so i think the decision to say we are dropping es5 support we are requiring es9 now was justified looking at these numbers and something that i also uh, find kind of fun to look at here is uh, the firmware top 10 and the notable firmware groups because yeah that kind of paints an interesting picture with regards to what firmware is used most um, it's a bit tricky to classify the various marlins so we on, only currently de de defer here between uh, prusa and uh, creology marlin and everything else is up here in these 51.82 percent but yeah um, take a look at that dig around in this data if you want uh, it's kind of fun um, yeah and Jim said that apparently we also had a change in the plugin install stats. So let me take a quick look. Oh, Octo Everywhere overtook. Yeah. For the longest time, I think it was like Bad Level Visualizer, Print Time Genius, and Octolabs or something. And then apparently Octo Everywhere is now on, on place one. So congrats, Octo Everywhere. Um, and trending this week is the Bad Level Visualizer. <laughs> You are, you are working on it, Jim. Um, yeah. So that were the stats. And uh, uh, sorry, my Stream Deck is not yet fully integrated with OBS under Linux. And now I have to click into a UI like a cave woman again, instead of being able to just press a, a shiny button on my desk. Um, and this sometimes takes a bit longer to figure out where it is on the screen in front of me. Okay, um, Q&A. Nothing in the backlog, as I said, so I'm going to throw a quick look into the chat here. Um, Janda asks, is it easy or difficult to port the new webcam plugin interface or the new G-Code viewer to the upcoming 2.0? Oh, uh, absolutely no problem at all, because uh, most of the changes uh, where things get tricky to pull off in 2.0 will be the com layer, uh, and both have absolutely no uh no no ties to that at all so that should be no issue um any other questions not as far as i can see <laughs> yeah mm, also apologies if i sound a bit like i have a stuffed nose or something like that i'm still trying to figure out why that is the case with an with a dog uh could be an allergy but a really tiny one only and it's, it's yet another medical mystery in my life. <laughs> Currently, no one can tell me what's up. But yeah, I don't have the sniffles. I just have some sinus blockage problems. And that makes me sound like I have the sniffles. Apologies for that. Um, yeah. I think in that case, we might just make this a small one or short one. Unless there's anything that you want me to dig a bit deep in, uh, uh, dig a bit deeper into that I mentioned, 
over the course of this. Commander Cody says SX Hool School. What? Huh? <laughs> I can't make sense of that question. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the chat is very silent right now. And the temperature in this office is rising because I have everything that can create an air draft switched off. <laughs> so you won't hear it on the mic. But that means that uh, it's getting hot and hot in here. Um. Yeah, uh, in that case, we're just going to wrap this up, I guess. Uh, also, fun fact, I'm seeing way more people active, more or less active in the chat than YouTube is claiming uh, to see concurrent viewers for. So something is weird here. Um, and yeah, Jim, I, I figured that this might be a typo and it meant school, but I still don't know what it is referring to. <laughs> Because my school days are long, long over, actually. Um, yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to just do my usual wrap up stuff. And if nothing shows up in the chat until then, we'll wrap it up for good. And otherwise, I just start into a whole new topic. Um, okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I am... Um, thinking about changing the format here, maybe doing something like pre-recorded devlogs and uh, uh, I still have no idea what, what, what you are, what you mean, Commander Cody, but okay. Um, uh, as I said, so I'm thinking about doing maybe something like a pre-recorded devlog every month for which I might also ask for anything that you want specifically talked about. Um, uh, and um, do a Q&A, a live stream Q&A thing, maybe once per quarter or something like that. But as I also said, I'm going to think a bit more about this. And then when I have made up my mind into what options I want to offer and, and stuff, I'll, I'll ask on Patreon and you'll have a say in the matter. Ah, and yeah, that that makes sense, Commander Cody. Okay, uh, yeah, the idea was that maybe the the peak in the in the graphs and the usage stats was due to schools, uh, so octoprint instances running in schools, and that when the uh, when the school year runs out or something, they shut them down. But has this already run out now? I mean, here the big vacations haven't started yet, but I think stuff works differently here than for example in the US so yeah maybe that actually might be but then again why did it start in gen yeah I mean in, in January specifically or maybe it's just something that got mixed together with the usual peak or the usual increase due to Christmas presents which is of course also always a factor uh, but yeah long-term data a lot of fun to to go through and try to figure out what it means and making blind wild guesses that I have no way to uh, confirm or deny. Okay, so hopefully the next one of these will be in around a month's time, plus two weeks, plus two, three weeks, we will see. Um, depends always also a bit on my schedule and uh, any kind of appointment collisions that might occur on there, because I usually try to do those on Thursday evening. Um, but yeah, if push comes to shove, I might also just move them around a bit in the week a bit. And maybe that helps. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, thanks for being here. Here, Thanks for being here. Uh, I hope it was interesting once again. And um, if not, ask more questions because then it might get interesting or more interesting. Um, and yeah, as always, stay healthy, have a bunch, have, 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 have fun printing and happy printing most of all. Bye bye.